Hey everybody, what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Jim Sonneso FanDuel, who's here to break down the top plays this weekend for the conference championships. What's going on, Jim? I'm in a good mood, Greg, because there are no high-salaried running backs to jam in this week, which means I can actually use the receivers I want to use. There's no there's no John Brown on this list. We're not scrounging for Alan Lazard or Marquez Valdez-Scantling. It's not Scotty Miller time. I can actually use good receivers, which is a very weird feeling for me. So I'm, I'm in a good mood. Chipper, you might say. How about you? It's because you're an award-nominated analyst now, Jim. That is what this good mood all comes down to. Forget the running backs you're fitting in. You're just you're you're a star. I mean, it's mostly the running backs because I know in advance the frustration will be there for fulfilling out lineups this week. Uh, when I'm trying to you know fill out lineups without Stephon Diggs, I don't have to worry about that this week. The awards are what they are. I get to use Stephon Diggs, Devonte Adams, Tyreek Hill, so I'd be in a good mood no matter what happened with uh, other stuff for today. Fair enough. So let's get into those stacks and the top stack on the board, of course is Aaron Rodgers with Devontae Adams. Maybe I shouldn't say, of course, because the other ones coming are pretty damn awesome also. But we'll start with Green Bay. We'll start with Aaron Rodgers and Devontae Adams. Why is this, I guess, your favorite stack on the board? That's the better question. Not why Aaron Rodgers, not why Devontae Adams, but why this one over the other ones? Because I went in chronological order of when the game starts, <laughs> that's the main reasoning here. It's hard to pick, and I think the reason if you were to pitch me with this one being the top one is that if you're looking at these two games— you can expect with pretty decent certainty that the second game will be the more popular between the two because it's a higher total game. It's two really exciting offenses, two not as ideal defenses. So from a popularity perspective, that game's probably going to carry a bit more popularity when it comes to the DFS public. This game's probably going to go overlooked. But when you look at things, you realize that the total between these two games is just two points. There is a very real scenario in which this this game winds up being higher scoring than the other one. So I think that... If you're playing just one lineup this week, there is a lot of incentive to look at the quarterbacks in this game. And I said quarterbacks, that means both Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady very much in play. I do think that Aaron Rodgers is the preferred option if you're going at this game, though, because he'll probably be, I would assume, decently not super popular because the salary is right between Mahomes and Josh Allen. But there is upside here for sure. Last week, they were facing the Rams, who are a very good pass defense. You could argue the best pass defense in football. And they didn't have David Bakhtiari. Despite that, Rodgers still averaged 0.55, passing that expected points per drop back. He led the league this year at 0.36. He was well above that against the Rams. Now, Tampa Bay is very good. Todd Bowles it designs amazing defenses. We saw that give Rodgers a lot of fits back in week six. But in that game, they lost Bakhtiari mid-game. This time, they know they won't have him beforehand. They can game plan around not having arguably their best offensive player at left tackle. They also have Alan Lazard back. That's a good thing for this offense. Robert Tunyon has a better role in the offense as well. I think this game for Green Bay is a much different situation than what they had back in week six. They are at home. They are prepared. They are relatively healthy for this game. So I think arrows are up for them. So if you want to be different, I think all you have to do is not use a quarterback in the late game, meaning go with Aaron Rodgers or Tom Brady. I prefer Rodgers between the two, but do think that Brady is a really solid option as well. And if you're using Rodgers, you know to sack with Devontae Adams. The volume there is way too good to pass up. The talent, really good as well. So I think that there is a lot of incentive to actually rank this one first, even after we go beyond the chronological order of things. It's a great answer, just chronologically speaking. I, I'm into it. But Aaron Rodgers paired with Devontae Adams, not that it's going to be unique necessarily, but it may not be as sexy as going with someone with the Chiefs or the Bills. And, and you're right, that the Green Bay-Tampa Bay game, I guess, doesn't have the, the oak behind it, even though it's Rodgers versus Brady. But it's not as high-flying, you would think, as Mahomes and Allen. Maybe just because we're, they're younger and we're so used to Brady and Rodgers being here year after year. But Rodgers and Devontae Adams, you cannot go wrong Going with this combination in the early game for Sunday makes sense to me. All right, so of course, after doing that, now let's move on to that late game. And let's get to Patrick Mahomes and Tyreek Hill. Obviously a, a fair stack, but I think the, the right question here is why Tyreek Hill over Travis Kelsey as a stack partner to Patrick Mahomes? It's all about ceiling because Travis Kelsey has a tremendous floor. His median outcome is amazing. Like he's going to get to 20 points. I can say that with a pretty good amount of certainty here, especially with the way tight ends have fared against the bills this entire season. So Kelsey will be a good option, but if you're looking for a guy who can get you 50 points in one swing, that guy is Tyreek Hill. Travis Kelsey has a tremendous for, for a tight end, tremendous ceiling, but you really can't match 
Tyreek Hill's true ceiling, 100 percentile outcome. He's going to be the best in the sport at that discussion. Now, you could say, well, Sammy Watkins might be back this week. He was limited in practice on Wednesday. But remember when Tyreek Hill went berserk against Tampa Bay in that game earlier this year, that was Sammy Watkins' first game back. Now, we might get Sammy Watkins back for this one as well, but Tyreek Hill in the games with Watkins since Watkins' return, still 24% of the targets. He has about half the team's deep targets in that time as well. Just bizarre, berserk numbers. We know what he can do on that volume as well. We may see Patrick Mahomes have to sit in the pocket a bit more this time around and try to na- navigate with the, just the passing game as opposed to the running game for him, that can be beneficial for Tyree Kill. So I need guys with a ceiling on a two-game slate. I need guys who can single-handedly get me to the cash line. And I think that Tyree Kill has better odds of doing that than Travis Kelsey. Now, Greg, the workaround here is use both, which I think you can do given the the – incentive to spend down at running back for this week with the lack of top end options. So I think you can do both personally, but if I had to pick one, I am going to go Tyree kill just because that like true 90th percentile, 100th percentile outcome for him is impossible to match, not just for a two game slate, but really among any player in the NFL. We saw it against Tampa Bay, like you mentioned earlier this year, that top 1% opportunity of what Tyreek Hill could give you. And you may see that here uh, against Buffalo. Of course, Travis Kelsey with the higher floor. And yeah, you you go with both of them. But Tyreek Hill with that ability, with that game-breaking speed, and, and we've seen it before with our own eyes, what he can do. Not that Travis Kelsey has any slash by any means, but Hill and Mahomes, they have that ability to do something special here this weekend. The final stack is, of course, Stephon Diggs paired with his quarterback, Josh Allen, with the Buffalo Bills. And what's interesting about this one is, yes, Aaron Rodgers and Patrick Mahomes both can use their legs, but Josh Allen is probably the best running quarterback of any of these guys on the slate, and obviously that includes Tom Brady. I think that's something we have to consider here. Obviously, you're pairing him with Stephon Diggs. It makes sense. You don't really even have an explanation for it. But the question I will ask before throwing to you here is, if you had to choose one stack out of these three, you could include Brady, whichever wide receiver you want as well. Which one would you choose? I think that all revolves around the quarterback because these wide receivers are all awesome. Like, I'm not going to talk you out of Devontae, out of Stephon Diggs, out of Tyree Kill. But if I'm picking one quarterback on this slate, I am going to go Josh Allen because, like you said, he is the guy who will run. I'm shocked you put him above Brady from a rushing perspective. We can talk about that <laughs> after. You know, I, we can we can figure that one out for sure. But Mahomes, not fully healthy. We saw him run just three times last week, whereas Allen has run nine times per game in the two playoff games this year. We saw him run earlier in the year, but he kind of scaled things back once they realized that they were in a good position for the playoffs, didn't want to get him hurt, didn't want to risk his health. But now everything's on the line. There is a spot in the Super Bowl on the line here. We know Josh Allen, if he has a chance to take off and pick up 10 to 15 yards, he's going to do so. And that's a reassuring thing because Rodgers, Mahomes in his current state, Brady, they're not going to do too much with their legs. That gives Josh Allen the best true ceiling out of any quarterback on the slate. So if you give me one lineup, Greg, I'm going Josh Allen at quarterback, and that means naturally I'm going to pair him with Stephon Diggs. Using Stephon Diggs does not exclude me from using Tyreek Hill, who I prefer straight up, uh, but I think that that's beneficial. I can just use both, and I think that's a reassuring thing for this week. In the playoffs, Stephon Diggs, 29% of the Bills' targets, 47% of their deep targets in those games as well. So sure, it's a tough matchup. The Chiefs are very good against outside wide receivers, but honestly... Who cares? It doesn't matter. Stephon Diggs, very good, great volume, good quarterback right now. And I think that, again, this is the best quarterback on this slate from a fantasy perspective. So if you give me one lineup, Greg, I am going to go with Josh Allen as that quarterback because I think the rushing upside is there and you know who to stack him with. That is Stephon Diggs. You can pair John Brown with him as well for the salary savings. I'm not opposed to that by any means, but I think that Josh Allen, if you are going to make me pick one, would be my number one quarterback on this slate. I had a feeling you'd say that just based on the use of Josh Allen's legs. Not that Brady can't fall into the end zone. Not that Aaron Rodgers you know, can't run a bootleg or, or Patrick Mahomes find his way there as well. Um, but Josh Allen, is that is a part of his game more than any of these other quarterbacks. And that is absolutely what it comes down to because you can't go wrong with Adams or Hill or Kelsey or Godwin or Evans or, of course, Stephon Diggs. It comes down to the quarterback. If you're going with Josh Allen, pairing with Stephon Diggs and John Brown, it it all works, and it's going to be a very, very fun Sunday indeed. That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel Hurry Up. Jim, next time we talk, we'll be prepping for Super Bowl 55. It's going to be a wild Sunday, and I cannot wait. 
Yeah, single game slates allow you to get a little crazy, Greg. So uh, we'll have our fun with our straight up process for this week. We'll get a little crazy in two weeks, uh, get set for the Super Bowl. Should be a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to talking to you then, but good luck to you this weekend. You as well. Thank you very much, Jim. Tomorrow, we'll be joined by Tom Vecchio as we discuss the top plays of the day when it comes to the NBA. For Jim Sonis, I am Greg Sussman. Thanks so much for watching. Enjoy the games this weekend, and we'll see you back here tomorrow for another edition of the FanDuel Hurry Up.